Hi there, my name is Emma. I'm an artist and DIYer and welcome to my channel. Pinterest recently released their 2022 trend predictions, so I thought it would be fun to create some DIYs based on what they think is going to be trending in 2022. Apparently they were pretty accurate with the trends that they predicted that would be popular in 2021, so I'm hoping these are popular this year. I've seen some of these things already trending this year, and I'm probably going to do another video with a few more of these trends because I want all of us to be on the first trendiest wave of all of these, but some of them I have already seen. The ones in this video are gonna be checkered print, pearls, and goth. If you wanna see all the trends, you can just Google Pinterest 2022 trend predictions. It should be the first thing that pops up. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, like, follow me on here, Instagram, TikTok, all of those things. But let's get right into the video. The first thing I DIY'd was freshwater pearl earrings out of polymer clay, which I am actually modeling for you right now. I made some pearl kind of things. I made some pearl-ish things for a Halloween costume out of polymer clay. Uh, you'll see it on my page earlier. I did a fairy costume and I've been wanting to do them ever since. Polymer clay is huge with earrings and I haven't really seen anyone do full pearls. Although they're not incredibly realistic, I do think they have a pearly effect. I know that gemstones have been really, really big in 2021, so I'm thinking because pearls are predicted to be trending, that potentially we'll be seeing some polymer clay pearls. But again, I haven't seen anyone do this yet, and I absolutely love the effect. What's nice about this technique is you could use it for earrings, you could use it for other types of jewelry, or you could make flat backs and attach it to mirrors, any sort of decor, and they're totally customizable because you're not always gonna find a real flat, real flat, because you're not always gonna find a real freshwater pearl that is going to fit exactly to what you're making. So you can form these and kind of create however you want. But I made earrings and here's how I did it. I started with some polymer clay, which I warmed up between my hands and then separated into four sections, two really small sections for the top pearls and then some larger pearls at the bottom. And I just began shaping these. Uh, there's no real rhyme or reason for the way I'm doing it. A helpful tip would be to look at some actual freshwater pearls, but I'm just kind of smushing my fingers together to create some interesting shapes, having no harsh edges, and then trying to smooth out my fingerprints as I'm going. I took the two small pieces of clay and smushed them down to make sure they had flat backs. And then I took some chameleon powder. I didn't have a shade. I liked so I mixed two. This one was kind of bluey and that one was kind of orange uh, to kind of cancel each other out but they do make ones that are specifically pearlescent like for pearls. So I just took that and coated both of them and then I took these little hooks and stuck them in four pieces making sure that the fronts were how I wanted them and then I got ready to stick them in the oven. I baked them at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes and then grabbed some jump rings and joined the top section and the bottom section. And then I grabbed these flat earring backs which are specifically meant for earrings. You can get them at the craft store and combined the backs with some E6000. I love how they turned out. I think they're so pretty. I know they're not incredibly realistic, but they look so cute in person. They feel very elegant because they're polymer clay. They're pretty light. I think they'll probably be cheaper than real giant freshwater pearls. And also, as I said, I didn't use the right type of powder I combined to because the one I was using that was white was really bluish, whereas most pearls have more of a warm tone. So I combined it with orange, which isn't the ideal combination, but if you want to do this and you want to do it more correctly, you can even sand or buff these to make them really shiny. And then I would also get like a correct, actually pearl pearlescent powder rather than what I just had lying around. But mark my words, this will be a trend in 2022. I can feel it. This next trend was goth, which is pretty fun. I think this more refers to goth clothing, but I've been seeing more crystals, wicca, kind of cabinet of curiosity. And I think like the butterflies and bugs that I make fall into that category, kind of like, gory, dark, goth, 
feeling. I've also been seeing kind of Victorian darkness coming back into trends in home decor or predicted trends in home decor, vintage stuff. Um, so I, I can definitely see some goth home decor happening. I know two rooms in my apartment are painted dark blue. I love the dark feel and I love the idea of darker accents in my home. For this DIY, I made an all black snake vase out of polymer clay and an upcycled jar and here's how I did it. I started with a jar that I had saved. You don't have to use a jar. You can use a vase from Dollar Tree or from the thrift store. I just used this razor cutter and some goo gone and then wash it off. Again, you could not use an old jar. Totally up to you. If you don't, it kind of eliminates that issue of the rim that I'm going to try to cover up later, but totally up to you. I then took some polymer clay and rolled it out super, super long. I ended up doing it way longer than I was anticipating and I made one side a little bit skinnier, as you can see. I put the thicker side along the top rim of the jar and then I did kind of a swirly pattern along the bottom with the thinner side and I just kind of pressed it on and it stayed pretty well as I was working on the head. You want the head to be squarish. I'll show you how it ended up turning up. It was really helpful to have a photo of a snake on my computer as I was doing this but you can see it's very square-ish or I don't know what the technical shape of it but I used the back of a brush to make some marks on the head and then I'll do that along the body as well and then a toothpick to make a line for the mouth I rolled little balls and put the eyes on the very side of the head and then I used that brush to stamp kind of these u-shapes along the entire body of the snake I then put it in a cool oven because we're working with glass and you don't want it to shatter. I turned it on and let it bake for 30 minutes at 275 and once it cooled I was able to kind of slip it off a little bit which was ideal because then I could put some glue on there and make sure it stayed really well and I used E6000 then I spray painted the whole thing black because we're going for goth right you don't have to do this but that's kind of just the name of the game for me right now and I used this shiny powder to put on the eyes and then I used some spray paint to actually paint some gold details on the bottom Body. this is like my favorite technique to get the best gold I used some sharpie to do kind of lines down the eyes and I added a little bit of that gold on the tail as well I love how it turned out I really want to try this again with different colors but it is so cool and really interesting this DIY seriously looks so cool in person. I feel like it's one of those DIYs that like doesn't translate well on camera, but in person it is so cool. And if you wanted to, you could do whatever color you want. You don't have to stick to the goth theme. I was just doing it for this Pinterest video, but you can do whatever color you want. This was my first time baking clay on glass. I've never seen anyone do this before. I wasn't sure if it was gonna work. For one of my last videos, I baked porcelain, and that made me think of how you can bake wine glasses, so I knew glass was okay in the oven, and I know polymer clay is good in the oven, so this was my first time trying it. It did sag ever so slightly, if you can tell the head was kind of up, and it went just ever so slightly down, which didn't bother me, but if you wanted to, you could make foil supports for it to kind of keep it up but I think it turned out really really well and I can't wait to do this more in 2022. I love this next DIY so much. I made a checkered mirror. I've been seeing checkers a lot recently and I think they're going to be even bigger next year and that is what Pinterest predict so it must be true and what's nice about this mirror is that you can use this technique with blue tape that I'm going to show you on a bunch of different items you don't just have to make a mirror this is really versatile and you can bring checkers into your life in so many ways I did end up cutting this mirror out myself on my scroll saw if you don't have access to a scroll saw you could potentially do this on a jigsaw or you could buy a mirror or whatever item you want to do this beforehand you don't have to make this out of wood from scrap like I did. The only thing I would change about this project is that in hindsight, I wish I had chose pastel colors. I chose really high contrast colors and I think pastel is kind of gonna be more the vibe for checker, like um, think picnic, like soft pastels rather than harsh colors, which is kind of what I did. So that's the only thing I would change for this, but you live and you learn. I started off with some 1 4th inch MDF and I actually took a plate that I already had, I'm not sure what size, and traced it and then cut that out. That's my favorite way to make a perfect circle. I just used stuff that I have around the house and then sanded it both by machine and by hand. And then I took a bowl and guesstimated what the middle was, drilled into it so I could put my scroll saw blade through it and then cut out the inside of that. 
I then sanded that by hand as well and I used some paint from Home Depot. That's my favorite type of paint to use. I chose two different colors that I would be using for my checkerboard and this would be the base color. I recommend using whatever the lightest shade is for the base color. I then took my paper cutting machine. I don't know, I got this with my Cricut and I actually just put my blue tape on there at, I don't know, it was like maybe a two inch mark. It was just a two line. The most important thing is that you just do these consistently and it was actually really, really easy to do. I cut maybe 10 of these in the end and then I used smaller pieces as spacers in between them so I knew what distance to put them. I did this all the way across one direction and then switched and did the other direction, still using my spacers and then cut off all the excess. Now you're gonna wanna go diagonally from where your open squares are and cut out, I know this is super tedious, but you're gonna wanna cut out each of those squares. There's gonna be two layers of tape through this and you're just gonna remove all of these until you get a checkerboard pattern. Pat that down and then I like to use some clear acrylic paint maybe like three or four coats of that before I go in with my secondary color. Once that's completely dry, I used my X-Acto blade and removed painstakingly every single one of these little squares. I flipped it over and painted the back side with the same color. And then I took some E6000 and because my mirror was very similar in size, I went really, really close and just plopped my mirror on there. I love how it turned out. I do regret the color choice, but it is still so cool and modern. That is it for my 2022 Pinterest predictions into DIYs. I hope you enjoyed. I can't wait to see what becomes popular in 2022. I know I've said 2022 a million times during this video. I apologize, but I am super excited for all of these predictions and hopefully I'll be making a kind of a part two of this series with some more Pinterest predictions because I want all of us to be on top of everything that is trending if you wanna be, but of course, whatever style you've got going, is totally fine. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel recently. I cannot wait to go into 2022 making YouTube videos. I've got so much content planned for you and I cannot wait. Please let me know what you want to see in this upcoming year and I am more than happy to provide it. Thank you so so much for watching and happy making.